Yeah, boy, it's an old Dell. So here's what's really cool about this. This is something I've been wanting to get my hands on during my childhood, man. This is a Dell Vostra 1000. Now, it doesn't look like much, and honest to God, I overhyped myself. But there's some cool things about this that you cannot get in a generic Dell Inspiron machine like the one I use for school. Here's the two difference between the two. Really weird looking at them because, yeah, it's the same clamshell Dell design, but there's no buttons up here or anything, and uh, what's going on with this? Well, you know Dell, you know them well enough that they love to make modular configurations even back then, and you would be damned if they didn't do what they did here. On top is my personal school computer I still use to this day. It is a Dell Inspiron 640M. But, you know, for Microsoft Word, it works fine in 2020, so who cares? Vostro was optimized for one purpose and one purpose only. A basic, high-performance machine that is upgradable. That is all Dell had at the time for this. This was a the run-of-the-mill base, but... If you wanted to, you could upgrade it significantly, but it still didn't have any of the bells and whistles. For its time, it was a muscle car. You didn't have power steering, you didn't have power braking, you just had a big-ass V8, and you hoped to God that when the time came, you could move or break out of the way of someone. And yeah, those were dark times. But, you know, that's what they designed with the Vostro. Now, the Vostro is a little weird, because this is actually, I believe the equivalent of this is the 1507 Inspiron, and the only difference is between this and that. And this uses the same chassis. The 1507 is a 15, the 15 stands for 15 inch, 07 stands for the revision of that particular Inspiron. And that particular machine, instead of being an 02 or 05 or 07, 07 meant that it was an AMD derivative. This is an AMD derivative. I don't know why AMD. Never, ever, ever put the time into really marketing their chips. I, I don't know if it was because they were power hungry, and really the damage was done when Core 2 came around, and AMD was playing catch-up so fast that they really struggled. But honestly, at the time, the Core 2 uh, competitor offerings that AMD had were very respectable. And while they weren't saw as much, they were very respectable. And this uses a AMD-designed motherboard. The only problem with this machine is quite simple. The battery's flat. No good. So that's the first thing we're going to take care of on this machine is getting rid of this crap. And this is a 6 cell. I'm going to run you through the upgrades we're doing here and why we can't use this anymore. Because uh, not only is this thing original to the battery, this is the original battery to the computer, but it wouldn't hold it anyhow even if it was brand new. So... That's one upgrade we're doing, and here's number two. If you guess that's a CPU, we're absolutely correct. Dell is very, very sketchy on CPU support on all of their machines, like, not even joking. Even their stuff nowadays, it's just as sketchy and whatnot, and this is a case for Toshiba as well. Toshiba's the same way, but Dell machines, being Dell machines... Do not lock in them. They have to have an X in the actual model tag to lock them out. And I believe with modern ones, it's a, if it has a, uh, a K, it'll lock it. You can't use a K in a stock Dell machine unless it's a Dell Precision Series machine or an XPS. But the Vostros can take them. But Optiplex and Inspiron run-of-the-mill and Dimension machines will not take performance chips. There are ways around this, though. But if you get a chip that's the same exact type and parameters, and as long as it doesn't have an X in the, uh, in the serial number or the key number in the model number, and it doesn't have a Q or a K in the modern ones nowadays, you can get away with running that CPU. Uh, they're just very sketchy about it. But if the chipset supports it, it supports it. Now, this is something I took a gamble on because this chip was only 22 bucks and I didn't pay for it, so I'm really hoping it works. If not, I do have a chip I'll buy and return this, but this chip should be more than adequate. This machine has an AMD Athlon, 
64. So I believe it's an Athlon 2 derivative, or is it a Sempron 2 derivative? I don't know. Single core, um, single threaded piece of shit. It was the base, basic bitch you could buy at the time, and I mean, it worked God knows how long on Windows XP, but this machine was very, very inadequate on specs for the time, even for the time of its release, it was kind of lacking. The guy who owns this took such good care of it, though, that you gotta give him credit, because these machines get beaten on because they can, but he took the extra mile of keeping this thing spotless, so I guess we're gonna look at this battery. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a bookmark. Dear valued customer, thank you very much. See, look at that. They made you a personalized bookmark. Who are these guys? Tree NB, green power and high performance reliable battery. I know it had a shit ton of these labels on it. <laughs> Explosive contents. So, the reason we're putting a 9 cell in this machine over the stock 6 cell is not because, it's not just only because the 6 cell won't hold a charge. The 6 cell battery is way too lightweight to handle that AMD CPU we're putting in there now. That is an AMD, it's either a, a Phenom or a, a Triton or something like that. I don't know. AMD's got some stupid ass names. I hope this fits. Uh, oh, it fits. So what do we got for RAM? Oh, I think I actually already upgraded this for him. Because there is two gigs here. Did I replace this for him? I should have upgraded it. Okay, I put three gigs in there. That's good. I didn't realize I already upgraded it for him. I just realized something. I shouldn't have opened that up because we got to open up the entire machine on the inside to get at that CPU. Uh, CPU! Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. So... I've actually never told anyone this, but I despise the non-enterprise versions of these Dell clamshell-based uh, uh, machines at the time period. And the reason why is because they are really weirdly built. I mean, they're not weirdly built, but they're awkward to get at. If they're non-enterprise, they're normally very cheap uh, in some respects. In this case, it's not compared to other offerings that Dell's competitors had at the time. But the cheap part about it is that there's no access to the CPU drawer on this, so we have to disassemble the entire machine bone by bone to get to that. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of despise having to do this, but what are you going to do? I know these Dell machines really well in the back of my head, bit by bit, so... Shouldn't be too, too hard. Uh, I might replace this keyboard for him. I got a couple of them just kicking around. So there's the actual CPU right there. And it looks like we've got... Oh, no way! Does this thing have what I think it's got in it? Oh, shit! We got an onboard GPU! Nice! We don't got no fucking iGPU. We got an actual dedicated GPU in this sucker. Hey, man. Well, I thought he cheaped out in the order, but I guess not. He definitely got a good bang for his buck. I tried upgrading this Dell card. A lot of them come with these basic bitch Dell cards, but apparently the machine will not accept uh, a certain thing in here. There's an AMD chip in there. What is that? I don't think by... I mean, this is a pretty crappy phone, so I don't think he's going to be able to focus on it, huh? Nah, of course not. It never does. Go figure. Anyhow, to get at that, we need to disassemble literally the entire machine bit for bit. So the screen's got to come off. Everything. Now, these things are easy to as hell to work on, though. What do we? It's just these two screws right here. And the entire screen comes off. It's not a joke. We got to take the ground off here, which goes to the screen. That's our ground for a screen to take our Wi-Fi antennas off and our main cable or our display as well as our ground. Hopefully when it decides it wants to actually unscrew properly. 
Okay, and now this screen is still going to be held on because we still have to unscrew the back side. So we're just going to close it like this, and we're going to do the other side now. Put those screws out. Well, this is going to take a while, so I'm just going to pause until I'm done. Good Christ almighty, we're all disassembled here. Oh, and the screen should just pop right off. Or not. I don't think it really matters, though. Oh, screen's a part of the roll chassis, huh? Should pop right off, so... It's going to be kind of hard because I'm going to have to pry the thing apart starting from here, so... Yeah, let me start doing that. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, there we go, boys! That shit is off! And we have a very clear look at the computer itself. So now we get to start prying the actual sides off of it. I kind of hate them for this, but... This actually comes apart from each other in three different spots. It's really unique. They don't make them like this. Okay, I got one side popped. Kind of have to one by one pop. And I don't think this thing's actually been opened up like this since it was manufactured. So I'll be back while I do this. If you guys ever do decide to work on a computer yourself like this, always remember they put screws right in these positions to the motherboard in the center under the keyboard. They try to do that as much as possible. There's a microphone on this one. Oh no, that's the switch that tells it, hey, I'm shut. There's our trackpad connector. How's that? See, the guys at Dell knew what they were doing. See, they knew these things would be taken apart. And they knew the right way of getting them reassembled. Okay, that's because there's a hard drive right there. Alrighty. I guess we could just pop this out here for now. I might have an upgrade for this at some point. So yeah, it very much so looks like that there is a GPU right here. That's the top piece that connects up here for this, see? And this is... Holy fuck, man. They put a huge fan on this thing. Wow. All right, well, we're actually clean this fan out and whatnot and remove it from the housing and we gotta get to the CPU so there we go Look how clean this is I know it may not look that clean but to keep in mind this is completely stuck this has never been taken apart since it's been manufactured in 2000 and uh, I think 2004 2005 look at that this computer is 15 years old and that's the only dust that is accumulated these things get nasty normally. But this thing has been kept in such great shape. It's quite remarkable. You're probably wondering what the hell this thing is over here. This is the actual RAM slots underneath it should be. Oh no, that's actually for a separate uh, SATA connector, huh? Maybe that was for the, um, the Precision model. They had a Precision and a XPS version of this. And normally Dell will save out cutouts on the board for various uses, so they probably thought about that right there. So what have we got even on the board here? We've got an AMD, uh, I think it's a controller of some kind. We got Broadcom. Is that a Bluetooth chip? Or is that, no, that's Broadcom Ethernet for the, uh, that's the Ethernet controller. And I think that is the controller for the audio? I don't know, AMD had a hard time getting partners with them. Ever since the Core 2s came out, Intel was kicking their ass. It wasn't until recently with Ryzen that they finally made a comeback. But AMD was getting their ass handed to them. It was bad how bad it was. I mean, it's just... But I'm very happy for them now. They're doing very good. Outperforming Intel chips now. And still offering the best bang for the buck. It goes to show that they're still keeping to their roots and good for them. Like, seriously. Oh, fuck. This thing is still screwed in here. Okay. Ah, 
Yeah! ATI! I can't tell what it is because my eyes are from the dinosaur age, but yeah, look at this. AMD Sempron. Ooh, oh my god. Magical. Now, the thermal paste on this is still surprisingly good, but there's no fucking contact, so let's clean that up and put the new one in. Uh, here we go. This little whore gonna go away. See, isn't that a good pin design? Why didn't Intel do this? I mean, they had... Their equivalent at the time being to what we're replacing this with was this chip right here. This is a Core 2. What is this? This is a T23. Oh, never mind. This isn't their equivalent. Their equivalent was the Core Solo. But uh, this is a good example of those of the Type M and Type P socket. And that's what it looked like back there. See? So... Why didn't they do it like this is beyond my knowledge. This is a good idea. You get more pins per so per socket. It's just better continuity. And here it is. It's actually a true on. Amity's very proud to announce it. How's this going? AMD sockets are a little weird sometimes. Oh, fuck, they never add the matching gold arrow where it needs to be put. Like seriously. Going to assume right here. Oh yeah, see, it's got the little arrow right there. Very, very faint arrow, but it's got it there. Don't bend on me now. Just leave it in there, and uh, don't do this. What I'm about to do here, do not do this. There are tools for this. I am just a professional retard, so don't normally do that. Please, for the love of God. There it is. All nice and socketed. So we're going to put some thermal paste and put the heat sink back on. And we should be ready to go. Uh, another thing that was really unique to these machines was the, the speakers. They got an upgraded speaker system compared to a lot of the other Inspirons. They got, I believe it was like 90%. Like, normally these would have a subwoofer underneath, like right down here. But because these were not multi-media machines they were outfitted with only the front ends of those fancy inspiron computers it was kind of weird but it sounds nice for a laptop it does actually have a subwoofer or like the old inspirons would actually ha come with a subwoofer if you were uh if you bought that as an option although i believe it came as standard with the symmetrics or whatever the hell it was called the sim symmetric or whatever the hell it was sig sigton fucking I don't know what it was called to be quite fair with you guys, so I, I'm sorry, but they had a custom thing that they used. Just so we can get the thing booting and off to the point where I can diagnose, test, and make sure everything's intact, I'm just going to go ahead and slap this in here, max out the RAM, and try to load up the default OS that is on here. The guy actually has XP on this, and uh, he wants me to work with... Uh, well, I know it turns on. It'd be kind of stupid just to try anyhow, but... Uh, fuck it. Just gonna hook in our sleep sensor here. That's our momentary switch that tells us, Hey, uh, laptop shut. Go to sleep now. So we gotta hook that up. Make sure that's all good. There we go. Uh, there's that little bugger. It's all done. So that switch is good, and now we got to go ahead and do the more customary stuff. Screen needs to be reinstalled, and these are kind of easy to put back in, actually. All you got to do, it's kind of hard to position myself here, I apologize. But all you have to do is just... Yeah, screen's in. There you go, that's all it is. That's all it is to it, and we'll hook up the connections later. We're going to go ahead and shut the screen, and then we're going to screw it all back together. Those are all the basic fundaments you need when you put these things back together. All those particular parts need to be inserted. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to have it booting. At least not properly. Get all our screws. Oh, shit. Don't do what I just did. I'll probably fast forward through this.
Dell normally likes to use the long screws for the ends here. So you're normally better off, though they should all be the same size, but just in case, they'll always put the long ones in on the ends because those are the ones that are meant to hold in more than one half. And on the sides here where the Kensington lock would be, or maybe not in this side, but in the other side where the Kensington lock is, there has to be a really long one that goes in there because that's going to make it more secure. That actually is for this. I know that for a fact. And there's got to be a long one that goes in on, on the back here because this is a pretty long base over here, so we need a long screw that goes in here. I'm just going to twist this in a little bit. Hold it. And we need a long Kensington screw for a long screw. Shit. Don't do that. <laughs> here we go. Oh, fuck. I dropped it. <laughs> I'll just steal that one off of my own computer. I'm not going to bother looking for it. And the small ones are normally installed for this right there, or maybe not. Maybe that shouldn't have gone there. So another long one normally goes in here. A medium-sized one normally goes in, in this side of the frame. I just I know these things like the back of my head. It's pretty crazy. And that goes in over there, and that should hold it together. Oh, shit, I need another. I'm missing the one that I need. But that might be able to compensate for it. Now let's get this thing screwed back together now. There we go. We are almost done. All we have to do now is put the bezel supports in. That help make it a little bit better looking. Now these come out and snap in on purpose. You don't have to screw them in. I normally don't. But the whole point of it is just to help it look nicer. Oh fuck, that fan turned on full blast. I didn't even mean to turn it on yet, but okay. Better time for a test run than now, than never. Oh. Oh. Alright, it's so gonna check all our memory. There it is. Our true one. It's gonna set up. Unless it's gonna load Windows XP. Oh, well, okay. That's fine too. I don't know if Windows XP is actually going to load up right, because the hardware changes are pretty extreme right now. So there's a good chance it's going to crash on us. This thing probably has more power than the computer I have now, so that's good. Though if I really wanted to, I can get a CPU upgrade for that, but meh. Hold on one second. Fuck, you missed it. It just loaded Windows XP. It definitely feels snappier. Alright, so it's now a week and a half later. This actually run into further than it was supposed to because I actually got some things I needed to get done. Number one right now, I still have to get Windows 7 installed to a flash drive. The client originally requested Windows 10, but due to the lack of memory on that machine, I'm able to upgrade it to 8 gigs. There are people online who have said that successfully they've been able to get it to 8 gigs, but you're not able to really use all 8 stably. And that's in 64-bit mode, so... Really, it's just a matter of it not being 100% stable. So, we're just going to use 3 gigs worth, and we're going to install 64-bit of Windows 7, because there really isn't a reason not to. And so, yes. Save that crap. Alright, let's move this over here. It's really slow. I should really hook up another mouse. Alright, we want to get... Oh, I'm really sorry about the refresh rate, guys. Hey, proud. Alright, back from being retarded. I think there's something wrong with this USB device, and it's clocking it out.
All right, so what you just saw was me, what you just saw was me exploiting my frustration. It turns out, USB booting, not supported, fuck! All right, I've done a lot since you've last seen this computer. Matter of fact, it's already done. I just got everything done with this machine, and I'm not gonna lie with you, it runs fan-fucking-tastic. I don't think a modern computer out of the box runs this good. Dell Bostros originally started off as budget-based machines. Around this year period, this is when they were still budget, but they were orienting themselves more towards baseline performance. While still holding a pretty low value. The Vostros were no shits, no thrills and giggles. It was just a very basic to the bone, no shits and thrills system that still offered decent performance for its time. And if you upgraded these systems ac accordingly, they were very capable. And that's the case of this thing. Yes, the CPU tops out a little high. Let's be fair and honest. It's a dual core tri uh, Trion. I can't pronounce it. 64X2, TL62, we got a total of two cores, look at that, oops, performance, yeah, the Wi-Fi adapter on here is, is, is really bad, but it's, it's old Dell Wi-Fi technology, so it's, for its time, it was decent, let's see how all the ads don't help either, I bet you, for a Wi-Fi adapter of this age, this is basically very minimum, I mean, it is a wireless end, but <laughs> barely. So it's it's old. Works just fine, though, for what it is. Overall, upgrades I've done so far. So since you've seen me do the RAM and the CPU, which was kind of a bitch to get out in this machine, here's what else I've done. Did some cooling upgrades, added this really... I took it apart again and put this insanely good thermal compound in there. It's basically a thermal fuse. Uh, it's like this uh, automotive people use it. It's like the liquid weld stuff, and that helped this thing out so much. It still gets hot as balls, but it doesn't, you know, thermal throttle and shut off anymore. It just lights your whole goddamn leg on fire, unfortunately. But uh, that is the price you're going to get for this. We did the battery, and I did put the SSD in it which you saw me do, I got Windows 10 on it, and I actually got a new charger for it, and this. Come on. Slot loading DVD drive. Come on. That was an 11 buck offer on eBay. It is a full DVD writer and reader. And you gotta admit, that's a cool luxury feature. There's a relatively... Large amount of CPU stutter and poor GPU encoding, but I mean, what did you expect? <laughs> this is very high quality footage considering it, but we're running at 1080p and it's managing. I mean, hell, my little Inspiron that I use for school can't really do this.